Hey hey people! So I'm freebooting another more popular YouTuber here. I have a question for you. Do you like DPS? Don't answer that. Of course you do. You're a Guild Wars 2 player after all. You crave it. And will you believe me if I tell you there's a power DPS professional there that will satisfy all of your DPS needs while at the same time be able to carry your groups by doing very minor things like deleting break bars, cleaving groups of enemies down, boom stripping, and much, much, much more. While at the same time, it can easily blast away any bosses thanks to its incredible bursty damage. If you still haven't figured it out who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Rifle Holosmith. Get hot. Kaboom! Holosmith is the second early specialization of Engineer, added with a Path of Fire expansion, which gives the Engineer powerful holographic tools that can help him demolish his enemies or help support his team. Some of these tools include a giant energy sword. An holographic hammer that you can spin around you or smash it to the ground, creating a shockwave that knocks down your enemies. A fidget spinner that spins around your body and cuts enemies in half. And my favorite one, a portable holographic plasma cannon that when fired will blast everyone and everything in front of you. But how does Holosmith create all of these holograms? Unlike some other profession that uses the power of magic to conjure their tools or channel their skills, Holosmith instead uses the power of science, and thanks to a tool called Photon Forge that you create by spamming your train button on your hero panel until the circle is full, with this tool you will be able to harvest the energy of the sun and use it for your own needs. The Photon Forge will replace your last tool belt skill slot. Upon pressing it, you will notice your main weapon skills being replaced with the Photon Forge ones, effectively adding an extra kit to the list of kits that an engineer can use. Using the Photon Forge will make you enter Photon Mode. While you're in Photon Mode, you will notice that a bar under your toolbar skills is filling up. That's your hit level. It increases passively while staying on Photon Mode or actively when using one of these five skills. The higher your hit level, the higher your damage will be. Not only that, but a certain threshold of hit, mainly at 50%, some of your utility skills will start to have enhanced effect like having larger fields or adding damage in increased effects to your skills. What happens when your hit level reaches 100%? Well, it's pretty simple. When your hit level reaches 100%... Capacity exceeded! This is the part of the video where I'm going to explain you Rifle Holosmith, gear, trait, and most importantly, its rotation. Originally, this part alone was well over 40 minutes, but since I don't really want to pull another Sarah Firebrand guide, I've decided to delete everything and redo it by only focusing on the important things. Hopefully, I don't skip too many things just to make the video short and compact, and as always, if you have any questions, you can always drop down a comment below. I will try to reply to you as fast as possible, and you even get a cute art once I'm done replying to you. Unless you're one of those people that wants me to just add Plague Doctor on everything, then you just get ignored. In that case, you just get ignored. Let's start with the gear. Thanks to some heavy precision focused trait, Holosmith can freely take full Berserker gear without suffering to not crit cap. The main power of this build is its bursting potential, so even as a new player, I would highly recommend you to stay on the Berserker gear path. It may be tempting to take maybe Barrader gear for some extra vitality, but I highly discourage it. Weapon sigil wise, as like in almost every power profession, you want to take 4 sigil plus impact sigil. If you want to try it a tiny bit more, you can replace the 4 sigil for the corresponding encounter slain sigil. 
And lastly, your armor runes. You want to take scholar runes for maximum damage or ogre runes if you're a tiny bit on a budget. Let's now move on to your Olusmith traits. Explosives. This is where your main damage modifiers are located, and also this will make you a vulnerability stacking machine. Firearms. Thanks to these traits, you can fully run Berserker gear. Also, this grants you a 2% damage increase for each condi on the target. Olusmith. The trait line that makes this build possible. Percentage damage modifiers, sustainability, and lastly, the best kamikaze trait in the game. Probably the most important part of this guide. Many people struggle to play Olusmith simply because they cannot understand the flow of its rotation and its seed mechanic. I'm gonna try my best to make it as simple as possible for everybody. Olusmith rotation can be easily divided into three big chunks. We can call these chunks Olusmith phases. Depending on which phase you are, your gameplay changes along with your hit level. These phases are your bursting phase, your cooling down phase, and lastly, your eating up phase. To be a good Olusmith, you need to master what skill to use in each phase, and also you need to learn how to chain these phases together without messing up your hit levels. But let's start by explaining every single phase, starting with the bursting phase. The bursting phase is the part of the fight, usually the beginning, where you pre-hit and you're ready to use all of your most damaging skill in a very short period of time, granting the Olusmith its greatest bursting damage potential. The bursting phase is then followed by the cooling down phase. The cooling down phase is the phase that happens after you overheat and explode. This is where you are at your lowest in terms of damage because the Photon Forge will be locked down until your hit reaches 0%. To make up for this lack of damage, you will need to use your weapon skills and kits. Eating up phase. This phase happens when your hit level is at 0%. What you want to do here is to use as many high damaging Photon Forge abilities as possible before reaching 100% hit level and overheating. Like I said before, to master Olusmith, not only you need to know its phases, but also to chain them together. The most common chain is usually the bursting phase, followed by the cooling down phase, and after that you want to continue with the eating up phase. Looping, cooling down phase, and eating up phase after that. But to be efficient at Olusmith, you also need to be on the alert for opportunities. If you notice, for example, a boss becoming invulnerable, or is about to get seceded, this is the perfect opportunity to set up a bursting phase, by quickly overeating and saving up your bursting skills to be able to inflict as much damage as possible once the boss is vulnerable again. Theory explanations are nice and all, but how does it actually plays? I'm gonna now show you the rotation while also keeping on the screen which Holos mid phases we are cur currently at. Also, I'll try to keep it as beginner friendly as possible, but if you want a more in-depth rotation, you can always visit your preferred benchmark website. Before starting to blast the golem, I want to let you know that this rotation and the rest of the guide will be fractal focused. This doesn't mean that all of this info is not usable in raids. The main and only thing that changes from the raid rotation is that we're going to precast our laser disc and that we're going to use our prime light beam while entering Holoforge, instead of using them after overheating. But that said, let's start with explanation. You want to be in your bursting Holosmith phase, so be sure that your hit level is at least at 75%. Starting bomb kit and while walking to the boss, you want to precast your laser disc, followed by your big old bomb. Immediately after, cast your fire bomb before switching to your grenade kit to throw a sharpener grenade. Sharpener grenade can be skipped if your team DPS is high and you just want to rush as fast as possible to your overheat. After your sharpener grenades, you want to start charging your prime light beam laser. And while you are in the middle of the charge, you want to enter your Holoforge. As soon as your laser goes off, immediately cast your Grenade Barrage, followed by Corona Burst and Photon Blitz. 
the moment that you see your heat level peaking to 100%, use your Blade Burst. As soon as you are overheating, keep spamming your number 4 on the keyboard. This will make it so that as soon as your weapon skills are ready, you are going to use them immediately, so that you waste no time on your overcharge shot. Cast Blunderbuss after that, and while keeping your mouse cursor on your UI, use your jump shot. Once you have landed, immediately swap to your grenade kit and use all of your damaging grenades, starting from sharpener grenade. Then switch to your bomb kit, use firebomb and start out attacking with bombs. Once your firebomb cooldown reaches 4 seconds, swap to your grenade kit for a quick sharpener grenade and then go back to your bomb kit to cast firebomb. Sharpener grenade Firebomb and Blunderbuss are all better skills to use instead of just auto-attacking with bombs. Try to use as many of them as possible without messing up your cooldowns. You may start to notice that two bad skills like Big Old Bomb are coming back from cooldown. You can use these skills to fill some gaps in your rotation, but try to always use Blade Burst above 50% EAT. Your EAT level is finally at 0%. Enter All Forge and immediately cast Corona Burst and Photon Blitz. Try to not interrupt your auto attack chain and keep auto attacking until your Corona Burst is back from cooldown. The moment your Corona Burst is off cooldown, use it and as soon as you finish casting it, enter your bomb kit to use Firebomb, followed by Sharpener Grenade and Blunderbuss. Once you finish casting Blunderbuss, Re-enter Holoforge and out attack until you can use Corona Burst and Photon Blitz together. This will make you overheat. If you have any Holos Meat utilities like Laser Disc or Prime Light Beam, this is also the time to use them. This pretty much concludes the Holos Meat rotation. The only thing that remains now is to just loop back the rotation while trying to do as little mistakes as possible. This concludes the basic guide for Rifle Holosmith. Remember, the more you play the profession, the better you will become at it. Some things can only be learned just by having lots and lots of time and experience with Rifle Holosmith. In the next part of the video, I will try to quickly show some very helpful tips and tricks that you can do as Holosmith, like subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the like button of this video. And also, let me show you a list of CC skills that you can use to help break the boss break bar. I know that this is supposed to be an Holosmith guide, but if you want to reach your full carry potential, I highly recommend leveling up Scrapper and Mechanist. But let's move on and show what you can do in Shattered Observatory. 
As soon as you're able, precast to 75% hit level. If you want, you can help your group precast some extra might by blasting your fire fields. One of the easiest ways to cheat some extra DPS in this fight is to precast your laser disc and then quickly grab the mist lock. This will fully refresh your cooldowns so you can use it twice when the boss spawns. Then, all you have to do is to do your rotation, your opening, like you learned from the rotation part of this video. Remember, if your team has very high DPS, you want to skip your sharpening grenades. During the island hopping phase of the fight, you want to recharge your hit level to 75% so that you're ready to burst the boss down as soon as he's vulnerable. Try to never overheat during the island part of this fight. Burst down the first mini boss by using your Holoforge skills, but try not to go over 75% hit level. You want to save your burst during the second phase of this mini boss. If the mini boss spawns extra adds, try to use Blade Burst inside his hitbox for some extra hits. Unlike for the majority of bosses, we want to start the next boss by having 40% hit level instead of 75%. A quick and easy way to set up your hit level is to swap your build template during the cooling down phase at the desired hit level. Just before the boss becomes vulnerable, recast Firebomb and Beagle Bomb. Enter your Olo Forge and use Corona Burst and Photon Blitz as soon as you can hit her. Once Photon Blitz is done casting, dodge into the boss hitbox and unleash your Blade Burst, followed by your Grenade Barrage. This will make so that you will deal a mega pint of damage at the start of the fight while also stacking lots of vulnerability on air. Once you're done throwing your grenades, quit Holo Forge and while walking to the corner, precast your laser disc. Continue your rotation like if you are at the start of the bursting phase. If your pub group chooses to not skip the anomaly, it's fine, just auto attack the anomaly using your bomb auto attacks. Just like at Scorval, you can precast your laser disc twice before fighting Ark. Once you get teleported, try to first use all of your damaging bombs and grenades while looking away from the boss before doing your burst. This will make so that your health will stay above 90%, keeping your scholar buff up while also adding all of those damaging modifiers by adding condis to the boss. If you happen to see the anomaly struggling to die, you can also use your lead skill to cleave both the boss and the anomaly. Once the boss is phased, add to your design spot. Try to always choose the same spot after each phase so you don't make misunderstanding with your teammates. With rifle auto attack, auto attack the bomb into the pillar. Depending on groups, it can happen that your hit level is at 0% at the start of a pushing phase. If that's the case, quickly overheat to 75% before pushing your orbs to the pillar. Generally speaking, you want to save your overheat damage for the boss and not for the mini bosses, so try to stop at 75% hit level every time and wait for the boss to come back. Mama is one of those bosses that will make you change your approach to her boss fight depending on your group and also on the daily instabilities. Generally speaking, just like a Tark, you want to save your burst for Mama when she's vulnerable. If at the start of the fight your group has a lot of DPS, 
feel free to save your jump shot to quickly go where the elites spawn. Elites are very easy to kill when CC'd, so try to contribute as much as possible on breaking their break bar. There is also an invisible hitbox at the center of the arena. This will make so that your blade burst always hits twice. If you see the little robot spawn, you can also easily get 5 hits at the price of 1. And lastly, you can use your AED to survive the one-shot attack. During the pre-event of Syax, don't forget to pull and clip the mobs. Having super speed, quickness or both will make your Choya go at light speed. Start Syax a bit or you start Arc. Use your damaging bombs and grenades before doing your burst. If you can, try to aim your elite skill where your head spawns during the split phase. You can use jump shot to quickly move to your head and inflict lots of damage. Also, you can use smoke bomb to blind the fixated enemy. Depending on group DPS, you may or may not overeat during the second phase of the fight. If the group DPS is high, stop at around 75% and then overeat at the start of phase 3. Just like in every boss fight with heads, if you can use Blade Burst while being surrounded by ads, do so. If timed correctly, you can use your Beagle Bomb and your Overcharged Shot to inflict the massive damage to Ensoli's Break Bar. You can also save a Blade Burst every time it will do the slam attack. Charge up your hit level during the speed phases and don't downstate and you will do fine for this boss fight. In underground facility, you can activate the console just by jumping into it from the right spot. Make sure that you swap the Scrapper so that you can activate Sneak Gyro and do all of these under stealth. If you have a Xira portal device, you can fully carry your team by portaling them over the gate. To do so, you will have to stand at this specific spot and then using your jump shot you are going to jump over the gap. Make sure that you target the floor and not the railing. Targeting the railing will make you fall down. After you open the portal, try to give as much stealth as possible. You can even take the mistlock to quickly refresh all of your stealth skills and use them again. There are many ways to solo the hit room into Manova Reactor. Here are some examples. Remember, if you're struggling, you can always take the Mistox Singularity and or the Cooling Rod to make it more easy. Stay in the middle of the console and double click the other two to unlock the hit room. In either Blade Fractal, tell your team to GG and as mechanist, shadow step to the floor above you. Disable all four consoles thanks to the help of Elixir U. Once you're done, GG as well and let everyone respawn. Once you have respawned, you can shadow step once more to the floor above you by aiming at this corner. You can also do the same in these spots in cliffside. But remember, if you're using a portal to port your teammates, be sure to swap build templates only after all of your teammates took the portal or the portal will close without them.
In Siren's Reef, you can swap to Scrapper and spam super speed for you and your teammates to trivialize the treasure maze. Swap to Scrapper and stealth your teammates in the Chaos Fractal to make the jumping puzzle easier. This can also be done in Uncategorized Fractal. On the Anomaly boss, start a 40% hit level and replace a laser disc for Art Light Arena to help with the pulling of the heads. Speaking of Uncategorized Fractal, you can skip the second jumping puzzle by jumping over this spot using your rifle. Overheat to 75% at the start of Twilight Oasis and swap to your scrapper after you reach that threshold. Use your sneak gyro and grab the mistlock to stealth your team. If you feel like you need extra stealth, feel free to use it a second time. When you're about to reach the first elite, swap to your Holosmith again. Any knockback or knockdown that you have will work on these elites, even if they have an unbreakable break bar. If you feel like your team doesn't need any help and you have a Xira portal device, you can place one ER and port your teammates to the next elite. Just like in the previous Fractal, you want to pre-eat and swap to Scrapper in Urban Battleground. Stead your team until you're close to the boss and then swap your template. Don't forget to use your blade boards inside the boss for extra damage. You can also bring ER Hard Light Arena to help with the pulling of the heads. You can also use a mortar kit to get rid of the burning oil from a safe distance. Once you have defeated the first boss, you can skip this next section of the fractal by jumping on top of the roofs of these buildings. After you land, you can either port your teammates or just simply destroy the gate in front of you and make everyone GG. If you own a Toy Axe or a Choya Tonic, you can skip the first part of Solid Ocean just by using your AED and dashing forward with super speed. This concludes the Rifle Holosmith guide. I have skipped many minor tips and tricks, but I'm sure you will be able to find them on your own after playing with the profession of it. I also want to give a warm thanks to the many people that choose to support my Twitch channel and this holo guide. You guys are truly wonderful. Also the one that I forgot the names and lost their name files. Anyway, I will probably update this guide in the near future when they release the next Fractal CM into the game. And according to this calendar, we're getting there sooner than I have anticipated. You didn't have to